everyone. Let's play Things You Didn't Know About Jax48. Her name is Sarah. Did you know that? I did. Fact number two, Sarah sucks at making puppets talk. See how our lips are totally out of sync? Not my fault. Her fault. Yeah. Why is my face crooked? It's like I have Bell's palsy or something. Okay. Take it away. Thanks, Cliff. If you've been wondering where the hell I've been through the month of November, I was participating in something called National Novel Writing Month. Or NaNoWriMo, as we like to shorten it down to. Because National Novel Writing Month is... Well, it's a pretty big fucking mouthful, actually. The point of NaNoWriMo is to write a 50,000 word novel in 30 days. So starting November 1st, ending November 30th. So you've got all that time, and it's supposed to be something that you just make up on November 1st. I took this challenge willingly, head on. I've been really busy this month trying to hit my 50k mark, and finally, on the night of November 30th, at about 11 o'clock at night, I hit my 50k, submitted it to the website, and here I am. And now, here it is. This is my first draft, rough, rough draft version of my novel. It's ten of, tentatively titled Psychics for You, which sounds kind of stupid and I don't really like saying it. Like, I think it'd be okay if you saw it on a bookshelf. So basically, the novel is about Carrie. She is a 26-year-old online and telephone psychic. You know, the kind that you call up and they say, hello, welcome to blah blah blah. So that's Carrie, um, except she has no psychic abilities whatsoever. She just got this job through a friend of her uncle's and that's what she does. Um, but the thing about the company, Psychics For You, which is why the book is called Psychics For You, um, is they have this program where all you do is you type in information and it spits out this kind of generic fortune teller reading for them. Anyway, through the company, she ends up getting a call from this celebrity named Ross and uh, gives him advice when her computer breaks down, um, gives her advice off the top of her head, and it turns out to be a really good decision, and he walks away a winner. And then, um, you know, he calls a couple more times, and they start to get friendly, and, um, and then they meet, and then there's chemistry, and you can see where I'm going with this. And then comes along Jason a friend of a friend, who might be a little more than a friend. There's also a part in the book where um, my main character has to um, do some makeup. And since I like makeup, obviously I added it into the book because it's an important part of my life and so I figured it'd be an important part in my character's life too. I designed this little look um, and I'm going to read a passage for you and then do a tutorial over the look that I created in the book. I don't, I've never tried it before. I don't know what it's going to look like. It might look hideous, but, um, well, she gets away with it in the book, so <laughs> maybe I'll get away with it here. I don't know. I looked down beside the model at the photographs that were laid out on the table. One was a picture of an elegant modern chandelier. The crystals of the piece showed many different colors, light blues, iridescent greens, and bright violet. The second picture was of a can of Mountain Dew with beads of condensation accumulated on the side. I flipped through to the final card and saw a picture of Pamela Anderson's ex-husband, Tommy Lee, shirtless and sitting behind a drum set. I quickly pulled out several eyeshadows and a liquid liner pen from the makeup kit that they had provided and set out to work. I brushed a white shadow over the model's entire eyelid dotted a bit of green iridescent into the inner corner, using the green of the chandelier in the soda can as inspiration. And then I applied a light pink to the outer half of her eye, and then applied a bit of magenta into the crease to create depth. I lined her eyes with a liquid liner pen, and then brought the line out and started in on the Tommy Lee inspiration. By the time the assistant stopped the clock, I had drawn a tribal symbol over half of her face and down her neck. It was definitely over the top, 
but I knew that Pike had an affinity for the avant-garde makeup. The model looked in the mirror and raved about how much that she loved it. She asked for my card while the assistants and Pike discussed my work in my portfolio. Another of the assistants approached me and handed, extended a hand. Thank you for your time, she said, shaking my hand. We'll let you know very soon. So I took a little of the Vincent Longo white liquid liner and put that with the green just to kind of make it pop a little more and be a little bit more, um, I don't know, clean. And then over the top of it, just for a little bit more fun, I'm going to use the Hard Candy um, Lash Tinsel. It's glitter mascara. This is the blue one. It's called Voodoo. You can get it for $6 at Walmart. just going to apply a little. So it's not really exactly what I imagined when I wrote the part in the book, but it's still different enough. I don't know if it would necessarily impress a big time designer guy, but um, I do have a tattoo on my face now. Not a very good one, but what you gonna do? What you gonna do? 